Hi guys, Chris here. So how much time do you spend moving data from one Excel file to the other? So many people out there spending way too much time doing this. In this video, we're going to learn how to do it at the click of a button using Excel VBA. We're going to go from absolute beginner level and work all the way up to a beautiful couple of lines of VBA code that will transfer data from one file to another. If you want to get straight into the content, go ahead, skip through the video. I'm going to do my usual announcements now. This is the Friday spreadsheet huddle. So this is a special series that we're doing. So we're going to do our video tutorial as usual. And then after the video, we have the huddle. Now, if you're watching live, you'll be able to see a link in the chat. You can follow that link. I'll hang around for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, and we can talk anything you like related to Excel and that's all we've got, got to do. Uh, follow the link in. This is not uh, broadcast on YouTube. Right. So we're working our way up to 50 videos uh, this year. This is video six. They've been very well received so far, these videos. So thank you so much uh, for your support and subscribers. When we hit 95,000, we will be taking off the 95 there, looking to get to 100,000 subscribers. Uh, this year. So if you want to get involved with the Friday spreadsheet huddle, or if you just want to know when we release a video, show some love for the channel, click subscribe and turn your notifications on 30 minutes before the session starts, you'll be able to see that we are going live. So transferring data from one file to another at the click of a button with Excel VBA from beginner level. Download files. Got a treat this week, not just one download file, we've got two download files this week. So make sure you download those download files and work along with me. We've got an origin file. You can see it says origin file at the top there. And we've got our destination file too. So yes, we're looking to transfer data from the origin file to the destination file. And you'll also see in the origin file, if you open up the VBA editor, we've got the, the framework, if you like, for the code that we're going to work through. We're working through this from absolute beginner level. So we've got five or six macros uh, that we're going to uh, work through. Now, if you've never done any VBA before, you're an absolute beginner, check up, check out the uh, links in the video description below. We've got our absolute beginner VBA video to show you how to get uh, your system set up for Excel VBA. We've got all our other VBA uh, videos and courses, free courses here on YouTube in the video description below. So make sure you check those out. Right. So I'm going to go straight into this subroutine here, count open workbooks. Yes, we know Excel is organized into objects, objects that live in collections, and we can count the number of objects in a collection. We can count the number of cells in a range. We can count the number of charts on a sheet. We can count the number of open workbooks. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to say message box workbooks dot count here. So stop the video if you're not watching live. And what do you think is going to flash up here in our message box? So I've clicked in this routine. I can see my cursor flashing here. I'm going to hit the play button uh, to run the VBA routine. And we've got two. So Excel is telling us we've got two workbooks open. So that just confirms to us. Excel understands that there's more than one workbook open. If that's the case, how could we understand how Excel references another workbook. How does Excel reference another workbook? If we could get that out of VBA, then we might just be in business here. Right. So I'm going to use message box again. I'm going to say workbooks. And then because these workbooks live in a collection and we've just um, witnessed how the collection works there, we can use an index number in the collection and then get the property of the first object in the collection. So we're saying to Excel, show me the name of the first workbook here. So once again, clicked in the routine cursor is flashing and we're flashing up destination file dot XLSM. So just take note here. Does your system have that file extension? Some systems do, some system, systems don't. That dot XLSM, that's important when we get into referencing the file later. Take a bit of time to play. If you've got two workbooks open, yes, you've guessed it. You can use that index number, hit play. We're getting the name. You could get any property that you wanted of this workbook. OK. So the destination file, I just want to activate it to begin with. The origin file is the active file here. I can see the origin file. I just want to activate the destination file. 
So we're going to say workbooks, and I'm going to use the name of the workbook. So I'm going to say destination file. I'm going to say .xlsm because when we just uh, saw how VBA refers to that file, we were using the file, ext file extension there. I'm going to say .activate. So all that's going to do, it should anyway, bring uh, the destination file up on our screen because we're activating the file. This is what we're looking to do anyway. Let's go ahead and hit play. And I can see, yes, the destination file has flashed up on the screen. I can see the top there. It says destination file. What typical problems might you encounter at this point? Well, let's just practice here. Let's go back to the origin file. Going to hit play. Typical problems you might encounter if you don't get that spelling quite right. And I see this error all the time. When I'm using Excel VBA, hit the play button here. We're going to get that subscript out of range. Subscript out of range error. Yes, not the most user-friendly error message you've ever seen. You might have be familiar with this error message. When you type the name of a worksheet wrong, you're asking Excel to reference a worksheet, the name of which doesn't exist. So that's what it means. And, you know, 90% of the problems with this kind of thing, where you've got a lot of syntax and file names and sheet names, they're to do with spelling. So take the time to get that spelling right. OK, so we've established we can activate a workbook uh, and move between the different workbooks, if you like. Can we get the value of a particular cell? So cell C7 on the data sheet, I'll just say bye for a second. I can see from the tab in the bottom left, the name of this sheet here. So cell C7 on the data sheet, would we be able just to, once again, flash that up, flash that up in the message box and confirm the VBA is understanding the value in that cell? So how to do that? Well, one way to do that, it's worth having a quick look at this. This workbook, this workbook, and then dot sheets, um, actually, let's do it this way. So let's say message box, this workbook, dot sheets. And then what was the sheet name? The sheet name is data. So we need that name in inverted columns, of course, and then range. And it's C7 in it. Once again, not inverted commas. It's in speech marks there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play here. What's going to happen here? So it says walk 001. We can go ahead and test that. Let's change this to walk 101 just to confirm what's going on. Clicking back in the VBA editor, I can I can see the cursor flashing there. Going to go ahead and hit play, and it says walk 101 there. So we can see what's in a cell. That's really useful for us because we want to transfer values between cells. But it also gives us this, this workbook piece of syntax, just super useful to know. This workbook means the workbook that the code lives in. The workbook that the code lives in, if you're working with multiple files, it's great to be able to get back to the workbook that contains uh, the code that you're working with. So, but what about getting the value in the destination uh, workbook? So we can use that syntax again. So workbooks, let's say destination file dot xlsm uh, uh, with the speech marks and the brackets. I'm going to go ahead. You don't need to do this. This is just a display issue because um, I've only got half the screen here for the VBA editor. I've just put a space and the underscore. That means that the same line of code, if you like, will continue visually uh, on the next line. So what's this going to do? Workbooks, destination file, sheets, data, dot range, C7. So if I go back to the destination file, I just want to confirm the name of that sheet. Ah, the name of the sheet is, is actually origin. So let's go ahead and let's see the kind of error message we would get here. So once again, we've got that subscript out of range error again. That's because the name of the worksheet is not accurate here. So I can see the name of the worksheet is actually uh, origin. So I can reset the VBA editor here, click into the routine, hit play. And I can see we've got nothing in the message box here. So it's C7 on the origin sheet in the destination file. I'm going to type in test there, hit play, and we can see we've got our text appearing there. So this is how you build it up, guys. This is how you build it up step by step. This is how I do all my VBA routines, office scripts, whatever language we're talking about. You've got to build it up step by step. You've got to be able to test. You've got to be able to understand the consequences of the changes you made. If you can do that, you can test, retest, build it up slowly, the world is your oyster. Seriously, you'll be able to do anything you want, pretty much 
in Excel VBA. So moving on to that transfer now, moving on to that transfer, what's our basic concepts here? It's a concept we've seen so many times on the channel before. It's our A equals B concept where destination equals origin, destination equals origin. So we need the destination file first equals to somewhere in that origin file. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to do some copy pasting here. So let's go ahead and take this syntax here, control C, control V on the Windows PC. I don't need the message box here. So we're saying workbooks destination file sheets origin dot range c7 equals i'm going to use the underscore again here so this is displaying on multiple lines it's actually a single line of code i've just got the space and the underscore there um so let's go ahead yeah why why waste energy doing typing when we could in this case do a little copy paste control c and control v here so destination equals origin so I can go ahead, type in origin file, then what's the name of the sheet? Quite inconvenient this, isn't it? Having a different sheet name in each file. I'll learn, guys. I'll learn for next time. So the name of the sheet in the origin file is data and C7. So what are we expecting to happen here? Going back to our origin file, what's in C7? So walk 101 in C7. If everything works well, we're expecting that value to appear right here on the destination destination file origin sheets. I'm going to go ahead, click in the routine, hit play, and I can see walk 101 coming through there. Never believe it first time, guys. Never believe it first time. Let's go ahead, uh, restore the original value here, walk 001. Just to prove that the destination file doesn't have to be active, I'm going to go ahead and run this code with the origin file active here. So I'm going to hit play. And hopefully when we switch back over to the destination file, we can see walk 001, that value that I just changed has pulled through here. So that's for a single cell. Not so exciting, is it, being able to do a single cell? Let's suppose we wanted to transfer all of this data across. So we're starting in C7, ending in J63. Now you might want to stop the video here. You might be able to do this yourself. So J63 is where we want to go to. We're going, to. we're going to adapt some of the code because we know it's broadly speaking, well, broadly speaking, it's almost exactly the same thing we're doing. We just need to change the references here. So how would you do that? As I said, stop the video, try to do this yourself. Uh, C7 to J63, C7 to J63, twice there. I'm going to go ahead and put dot value in. This is just for completeness, I think, or it might be necessary, actually. I quite, can't quite recall here. The value is the default property uh, of the cell, so that's going to be transferred if you don't specify a property. I think for completeness, we should specify the property here. Now what happens? So all this data I'm expecting to be transferred into our destination file. So I've clicked in the routine, hit play, so that routine has now run, and I can see our data coming across into our destination file, guys. That's it, guys. This is how to do it. Click at the button, data transfer from one file to another. No need for those file links. No need even for something like Power Query. The cleanest, most powerful solution does come from Excel VBA, assuming you're working in the desktop. This, in my opinion, is the uh, best option. You've got questions, I know, because what if this data set was changing size? How would you do that? What if you wanted to transfer to multiple sheets in the file? All of those questions are answered in videos linked in the video description below. Uh, I will see you in one of those. If not, I will see you in the next video, which is on the screen now.